But for the left, of course, kowtowing to China comes instinctively, but it's bigger than that. The real instinct here is that banning things other people like and enjoy is the purest expression of power. When you can snatch someone's pleasure away, you feel like God. <laughs> the rush of telling people they're not allowed to do something is just irresistible to certain sorts of people, to weak people, pathetic people, who cluster together in what's called the Democratic Party for warmth and safety and power. Notice conservatives aren't that interested in their party. They'd rather be with their own family. But your average leftist is weak and afraid inside. And so the party is the most important thing, not the individual, the party. Together we are strong. Apart we are powerless. Turns out some people like menthol cigarettes. Not allowed. Oh, menthol cigarettes, but some people like them, particularly poor people. They like them, don't have a lot of pleasures. Menthol cigarettes are one of them, but they can't have them anymore. They're being banned. Menthol cigarettes cause cancer. Shut up. Well, of course, a lot of things cause cancer, probably more than we know. Potentially cell phones cause cancer. Potentially diet soda causes cancer. They do in rats. They're not banned. How come? Because the people who make and use those products have paid millions in campaign contributions to keep them legal. But nobody cares what menthol smokers think. They're at the bottom of our caste system. They're poor, so no more pleasure for them. Menthol cigarettes are out, along with the many small businesses that sell them. Watch. The biggest seller at the Elmsford Smoke Shop these days are the vaping products. But a close second is menthol-flavored cigarettes. I think that's a basic like a human right to buy like a, the favorite uh, cigarette if they want. Owner Anna Yao says menthol products have always been popular. It's why she keeps them displayed behind the cash register next to the regular cigarettes. But soon Anna may not be able to sell any of those flavored butts. Very difficult, very hard for us. The FDA today proposed a plan that would in fact ban menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars, saying the actions have the potential to significantly reduce disease and death. As for Anna, she hopes the FDA will reconsider so her business can survive. It's really hurt my business. What's so interesting is the lady you just saw was clearly not from this country. She doesn't speak regular English. She's obviously an immigrant. Her first response is, well, Buying the kind of cigarettes you like is a human right, and she's absolutely right. And she probably moved here for that reason. But boy, do they hate tobacco. And it's not because it causes cancer. They don't care about your health. They closed the gyms during COVID. Anyone who closed a gym during a pandemic that killed people who were fat clearly doesn't care about your health at all. They hate nicotine. They love THC. They're promoting weed to your children but they're not letting you use tobacco or even non-tobacco nicotine delivery devices, which don't cause cancer. Why do they hate nicotine? Because nicotine frees your mind and THC makes you compliant and passive. That's why. They hate it. It's a real threat to them. New legislation in New York would raise the cigar tax. How do people die from cigars? It's 75% now in New York. The tax on cigars will be 95%. Guess what the tax on weed is in New York? 13%. Oh, have some more weed. <laughs> no more nicotine for you. You should also know that New York has also banned the use of plastic straws. Now, why'd they ban plastic straws? You know, there's a reason for this. But we can't remember what it is. To be fair, neither than can Kamala Harris. Do you ban plastic straws? I think we should. Yes. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest. It's really difficult to drink out of a paper straw when you had, if you're just, like, if you don't gulp it down immediately, it starts to bend. Yes. And, then, and then, you know, the little thing catches it. And then, you know, but, so we got to kind of perfect that one a little bit more. <laughs> let's, let's encourage innovation. And, and you yeah, know, I think we could do a little bit better than some of those flimsy plastic straws. But we do need to ban the plastic. <laughs> let's encourage innovation. You can't even get the planes to take off on time. You can't even get the rats out of Penn Station. But you, who've never had a job, are going to invent an alternative to the plastic straw? Hmm, we'll wait. What are you going to come up with, a titanium straw? What? Got any ideas on that, Carmela Harris? These are the last people 
Who should be regulating anything? They would know innovation if it got in the shower with them. But the bottom line is they have no authority. They have no constitutional authority over your personal life. If it's not in the public sphere, they have no right to ban it. You can smoke any kind of menthol cigarettes you want. You can cook at any stove you want. Only you decide what goes into your body, period. That's the promise of America. And if we don't stand up for that and say, no, no, come and get it. Unless we're not embarrassed to be made fun of by MSNBC. Oh, you're obsessed with gas stoves. No, you're obsessed with gas stoves, buddy. You're obsessed with controlling my life, and I'm not going to let you. Come and take it. How's that? But no one says that. So now they're banning laundry detergents, because those are dangerous, too. Incandescent light bulbs. They're also on the way out. The Department of Energy has just banned them. They look too good. So now you're stuck with some glowy fluorescent crap. You're saving the planet. There's no rhyme or reason. The only thing that unites all of these regulations is the control they hand to a small group of dumb people with no demonstrable job skills who only feel alive when they're crushing the weak. They make up these insane laws because it makes them feel like Jesus. That's the truth. In Massachusetts now, you can't throw out your old jeans and your old socks anymore. It's a civil offense to dispose of textiles. It makes you want to go and just throw T-shirts all over Martha's Vineyard just to break the law. The country has banned shower heads that work and toilets. So those are the rules for you. No rules apply to the people in charge. Hunter Biden gets to lie in a federal gun form, but you can't throw out your old jeans. You can't have a gas stove, but they can drive drunk. You only arrest for the purpose of dealing with a felony that's committed, and I don't count drunk driving as a felony. So you don't count drunk driving as a felony, but catching a menthol smoke is now a felony using a shower head that you don't like or the wrong light bulbs or throwing away your old socks. This is insane, and it only continues because people put up with it. You have no constitutional right to tell me what clothes to wear, what to put in my body, what flavor my cigarettes are. None of this is in your purview as a politician. Fix the freaking roads. You're totally incompetent. This is a country that was founded because people didn't want to pay a tea tax, and so they started a war. But it's changing. And a lot of Americans, we hate to say, particularly affluent ones, particularly affluent middle-aged women living in cities, not to be too specific, are totally for this. Today, the New York Times published an op-ed from a woke American woman who spent 16 years living in China. What does she miss about China? She misses the Communist Party of China co-parenting her children. She thinks the Chinese commissars did a better job as a mother than she could have. She misses their firm hand. And we're quoting, not making this up. This is the New York Times today. Quote, our stringent government co-parent quickly made its presence felt, the woman writes. The girl's Chinese kindergarten lectured us on everything, including how many hours our daughters should sleep, what they should eat, and their optimal weight. The Communist Party, party fat shamed this lady's kids. Quote, we sometimes felt as if our children were on loan to us for evenings and weekends to be delivered back to school each weekday. Now, again, she's not writing a new version of darkness at noon, she's complimenting the government of China. The piece ends by noting, quote, tight control of the Communist Party's surveillance state results in its own kind of freedom. Okay, that is un-American, that person is sick, and if you don't recognize how sick that person is, if you long for a fascist government to call your little girls fat, you're a sick person, okay? The fact that the New York Times would run that and expect all of its readers to applaud. Oh, if only the government would tell my kids they're fat, this would be a better country. You gotta fight for freedom no matter what.